This video is going to cover how to format emails in any automation task. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new email bot. And I'm going to focus on the e send email task here. So as you can see, this task here on the right side of the screen is a send email task. And we'll make sure it's associated with the table that we want to pull the data. Use dynamic email. I'll cover in a future video. This is a new feature that leverages AMP protocol to display app views directly in the email that your users can interact with. You have the ability to send to specific individuals. And then under use default content, this is where you'll want to disable this option. And once you disable that, you'll see that the email content section will be opened up to give you a lot more granular ability to modify the different aspects of the email that's being generated, such as email subject, email body, courtesy copies, blind courtesy copies, who the reply to email address is, what the email from display shows, and even specifying the preheader. Focus here on email subject, email body, as those are typically the more important aspects of the email. You'll notice that in the subject here, there's been a generic subject that's been created. This features plain text and then some double arrows that are enclosed a uh, column. And these double arrows are a syntax that the email, that AppSheet's email generator will use. So whenever the field Whenever there's a field where it says template that yields text or, or some other type of format is supported, this means you can use this templating system to create the text dynamically uh, based off of fields in your table itself. So in this case, we have the plain text here and in the double arrows, anything in double arrows will tell AppSheet to run an AppSheet formula. In this case, the formula is a very simple formula that just says project name. But I could also create more complex formulas and have them inside double arrows as well, and AppSheet will compute those as you would typically be used to. So you can start populating different fields related to your table directly in the subject or email body to give it uh, the layout you want. In the email body itself, you can also use HTML tags as well if you want to um, use images or bold or any kind of HTML formatting rules. You can also write, type those into the body itself. So this flexibility is nice, but it requires your knowledge of HTML. If you wanted to do anything a little bit more fancier than just showing text on a page for an easier method for generating a template, you'll scroll down here and you'll see that there's this option called email body template. This allows you to create a Google Doc or a Microsoft Word Doc that AppSheet will use to generate the email body. And you can create one by hitting this Create button here, and it'll create a document in your file store, your default file store. So if you're using Google, it's going to create a Google Doc. If you're using Microsoft, it's going to create a Microsoft Doc. Once it's been created, we can click on View. Here we opened up the doc that has the format for the body. So you can see here that we have some pre-generated text and field references all set up in this document. And just like with the body field and the subject fields, we see the double arrows that denote a app sheet formula reference inside of them. The benefit to using a document over the infield, uh, the fields in the editor, is you have the ability to easily change things like color. So if I wanted to change the color on this, I could change the colors in a much more what you see is what you get type format. If I wanted to apply underlines or any of the Google Doc or Microsoft Word formats, inside the document editor, I can just apply those easily 
in a familiar format. In addition to that, I can also add images. I can also insert any image, drawings, or even tables as shown here. This table has an interesting syntax that we haven't covered yet called start. This is important if you're dealing with any type of child records or if you wanted to run an email automation against the whole table and have AppSheet generate a list of records and pull the relevant fields uh, from those records. So I'm going to go down here and specifically focus on this type of the this part of the, the first part of the start syntax. When you're using start, you're you're going to start obviously with start and a colon. And then after that, what you need to have is a list of some kind. So that could be a list of a virtual column that's a list of related tasks in this case. Or I can just reference a list of IDs from another table of any kind. So if I had a table called parks, for example, I could reference parks table and the ID column. And this tells AppSheet to go pull all the IDs and start generating a list of all the records for that table. So after you do this, then you could start placing the different fields from your target table. So in this case, I have in this, this example here, I have this related tasks, a list of related tasks that are being generated. And then I have the first field from that table, right? Called task ID pulling, you know, you could reference any of those fields from that table just by encasing them in double arrows. And then when you get at the end of that, when you're ready to essentially have AppSheet stop pulling fields from that record, you're going to end with an end in double arrows. And then AppSheet will then continue this process for each record of, from that original list that you identified after the start. I'm going to just add a real quick image in here too, just for illustration purposes. And I can resize this image however I want. So if I were to go run this automation now, I will generate an email that will have this type of layout. So viewing the email that was generated from that template, I can see that I have my name, the header that I colored, along with the project details that I bolded. And you'll notice that AppSheet automatically plays the image that I had in for the image field for project banner. There's the tree image that I placed in there. And then down below, you can see a list of all the tasks uh, that have been created. So you could expand upon this concept and obviously create a, a, a really professional looking email fairly easily. And then one of the benefits too with the format with using a Google Doc template is you have the ability to manage that separately from the app definition itself. So if you did need to make tweaks to your format layout, you can simply go make those quickly in the doc and that will instantly be live when you make those changes. So now that we went over that concept, we can also cover attachment content types. In AppSheet, there's a variety of different types you can select. PDFs fairly common and just like with the email body type, you can create attachments uh, using a Google Doc. You can give those attachments a name. And once again, you can have the templating system where you dynamically generate names for that attachment. There is an attachment archive as well. So this is where if you want to also save the attachment to a file store while it's being attached to an email as well, you can set that up here. So you have attach and do not archive that means you'll just send the email with an attachment if you have attach and archive it'll send an email with that attachment and also save that file to your file store and you can specify 
um, your file store down below if you have more than your default one available and identify the folder path in your file store that you want AppSheet to save. For disable timestamp, all files, they have a timestamp placed on the end of them. If you want to, you can disable this so you know exactly the file name that you're creating, a combination of your folder path and your attachment name. You have some page orientation settings that you can set if you want to, along with different page sizes. And you could also set custom margins. And then one of the more overlooked features too is the ability to take any of your files that have been added to your app and stored in your file store, such as images, drawings, or signatures, and attach those as well, in addition to your primary attachment. With that, that wraps up this video about formatting emails. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and have a good one.